We're all about the signal here, no noise, right? So uh, we are encouraging you to mobilize and take up an issue that is important to you. And we have someone on here who is headed to Boise this week to uh, testify um, in response to a bill, some pending legislation. Now, we're going to have her on to tell you the story, but I need to tell you what this bill is. This is House Bill 506. And currently it's in the hands of uh, uh, Representative Jordan Redmond, a pledge signer in good standing here at CAI. And he presented this this bill um, about a month ago, maybe more, in the House Business uh, Committee. And since then, it's been sitting in the drawer, never expecting really to get a hearing. But our next guest um, <laughs> uh, put the uh, pedal to the metal here and mobilized folks in order to to make sure that this thing got a hearing. So, um, but but what is this bill all about? It's about short-term rentals. And recently, a television station did a nice little package on this, and we want to play some of that for you because uh, um, they did the work, so <laughs> why not let them do this? So uh, let's roll this news clip here, and we'll watch it for a little bit and, and see what the argument is all about. Thanks for being with us each and every night here on the 630. And tonight's 360 coverage, a bill in the Idaho State Legislature targeting city governments that want to regulate short-term rentals. It is another chapter in the battle over how to best regulate these rentals, which include Airbnbs and VRBOs. Advocates for the bill saying it protects the rights of people who rent out these types of units. Opponents are concerned. The bill undermines local control. Nonstop Local's Ava Wainhouse spoke with stakeholders on all sides of this issue to learn how it could impact communities in North Idaho. But we just want to put the best face of Coeur d'Alene forward, and we feel like what we've done here really does that. Over the last three years, Melissa Radford and her husband have worked to give new life to this home that has stood on government way in Coeur d'Alene for over 100 years. We put a lot of money into um, making this house beautiful and helping it stand for another hundred years. The couple fell in love with North Idaho after moving here from Portland. But in the last few months, they've run into some local trouble in owning a short-term rental property, commonly known as Airbnbs. This negativity that city council has created, it just breaks my heart. Um, because we just want to welcome people. City Council Member Dan Gukin has spoken publicly multiple times on his concern over the growing short-term rental population in Coeur d'Alene. Right now, he says around 800 are licensed with the city. Then they exploded, and that became a problem because they started to push into the neighborhoods. Gukin says the people who live in STRs are not your neighbors, and for those who call Coeur d'Alene home, they want to have neighbors consistent ones. He also says these properties tend to violate good neighborhood integrity. And it's not that they cause a lot of problems and we don't want to ban them. It's just that we want to keep them to a reasonable number. These are neighborhoods. These are residences. People buy into a neighborhood. They're investing into a neighborhood, not into a hotel. So our side is the other side for Mr. Redmond. We want to protect the neighbors and neighbors have property rights too. Idaho Representative Jordan Redman recently introduced House Bill 506, designed to promote access to SDRs and vacation rentals by limiting local governmental authority to prohibit the property uses or to specifically target them for regulation, regulation that other entities like long-term rentals would not face. I'm not against healthy regulation. What I am against is trying to, you know, force folks out of, you know, what they want to do with their property. We're trying to balance it. He's trying to pull the rug right out from under us. Gukin says under Redmond's bill, city government would lose control over the rental properties. And if Mr. Redmond's bill passes, the neighbors are going to complain to us, but there will be nothing we can do about it because he's basically saying that if you want to have a frat party every weekend in your vacation rental, there's nothing you can do about it. That will be your neighbor. And people in Coeur d'Alene don't want that. Okay. All right. Um, we'll, we'll, we're going to let, we're gonna let uh, Representative Redmond um, uh, during the hearing. We're going to watch his hearing this week, but we, wanted, we, we don't want to play the entire clip there. Um, uh, we want to make sure that uh, we, we get to our guest. I, uh, <laughs> but before I do... The, the point here, this this whole frat party thing is really hilarious, especially when you when you think it out in its logical conclusion. But the the and and I, I want to get into this story here. So 
Um, well, let's just do this. Let's, uh, if, if, if Melissa's ready, let's have Melissa Radford on. Uh, she was seen in that, uh, that news story. That was you, right, Melissa? That, that was me. <laughs> that was you. Fantastic. All right. Well, welcome to the program. What I really want to focus on today is, is how you were able to mobilize and what happened with this bill, because we set it up. The bill was presented about a month ago. It's been sitting in committee for a long time. And uh, I'm sure you guys were, were excited that this bill was presented and then it just sort of lingered there. What was your, what, bring us to that point where you decided you needed to do something. <clears throat> I mean, we've been developing the, an association across, uh, well, first of all, in, in Coeur d'Alene, when all this kind of started about a year and a half ago, we formed a Facebook group because we're like, this stuff, this isn't right. We need to see if we're not the only ones that this is affecting. And so we filmed, we formed the CDA Vacation Rental Alliance and had a Facebook group and got, you know, members and we, we formed a 501c6 and, um, you know, we have a board and everything. We're very official. Um, <laughs> and so just to kind of start some outreach within our community, because we know how many much positive we bring to our communities, you know, in jobs and supporting businesses and welcoming families to our city. Um, you know, not everybody wants to stay in a hotel and that's great. We're just another option. Um, so we started with, you know, with that and then, um, the opportunity came up with Jordan Redmond last spring to kind of work on this bill that he had planned. And I was able to participate and kind of help him uh, clean it up and make it so that it would really um, truly protect our property rights in the way that, um, that we, that, you know, the constitution says it needs to um, cities across Idaho have overstepped that line so far. And as we, worked on this with him, I started reaching out and finding that this is happening across the state and we're not even the worst in Coeur d'Alene. Um, places like McCall and Island Park and, um, you know, Bear Lake and several other um, communities in our state are struggling under this same overreach. I mean, it's it's abuse of power at its worst and they, um, these cities think they're completely justified and they're not held accountable. And this, the law that currently is in place in the state of Idaho for short-term rentals acknowledges that we are beneficial use, that we are residential use, that we benefit the economy in huge ways. It protects our property rights, but there was enough uh, kind of ambiguous language in there that cities have just driven the truck right through the Constitution. Um, okay. and so that's what this bill does. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. We'll, 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 we'll get into it a little bit more here, but, uh, but tell me about your experience in, in helping get this hearing happening. Cause it's the bills, mm -hmm. the bill's going to be heard this week. Yep. And, yep. uh, what, what was, you know, what was your experience with that? So we found out that the bill was being held by one person, the, the head of that committee, um, representative Lance Clow. And we're like, okay, we need to figure out what we need to do to do this. So, uh, Jeremy and I went to Boise, Jeremy, my husband, and several other people from the Idaho so uh, Vacation Rental Association, our Facebook group that's across the state. And we went and just learned on the fly. Like we became lobbyists by ourselves. We just started talking to whoever we could get an appointment with on the representative side, on the Senate side. Um, and then um, when we realized it really and truly was on represent, you know, that Representative Clow had made a commitment to cities that he was not going to let this bill move forward. We didn't know that at the time. And so we went and found him in the cafeteria and we were, I was like, I know Mr. You know, Representative or Chairman Clow that you don't like this bill, but we pray that you will listen to this and at least have a hearing because, you know, we, we are, we need to protect these rights. And you know, I didn't think it would make a difference. I We sent out a, a blast on our Facebook group and said, please, you know, everybody send an email to Representative Cloud today. I beg him to like bring it forward. Um, and then we the next day we were going to we had to we met with um, the Speaker of the House and the President Pro Tem. We went and we were going to start moving. There's another process where you can take a bill to the Senate side if it's stuck in committee and if the Senate committee will hear it then they could move it forward. And um, so we were trying to work through that. I mean, we we have no political Amazing. experience, um, but we just had, you know, we had the right people and God on our side, you know, to really just have the ability to talk to people we never would have expected. Um, and so we were kind of working through that process to get it on the um, Senate side. Um, and then I think it, it was at the next day we found out that um, Lance Clow received more emails on this bill than he ever has in his career. 
Um, and he decided to bring it out of the drawer and have a hearing. So, I mean, that was just a miracle and a win that we never expected. So we have a hearing on Thursday and we're thrilled. (laughs) That's fantastic. See that, that is the power of the people. That is the power of, of organizing, even if it's at this, this grassroots level here. And, uh, and it really does show that when you are able to mobilize like this and get the attention of, of the chairman, go down there, get involved in the process that you can, that you can have some power. Now, this doesn't mean that the bill becomes law. It just means we get to move it along the next, the next logical step or the next step in the process. So that, that, that is fantastic. Okay. Then let's get into the, let's get into this, uh, this, this bill here because this is fascinating, especially coming from now. I, I live where you live. So I'm very familiar with councilman, uh, Dan Gukin and, Mm -hmm. And his um and and I'm I'm gonna say this I won't let you say this but I'm very intrigued at the at the thought that he has such he has such a, a, an obsession with control with local control you know he doesn't like the state controlling the cities but he wants the cities to control the individuals and that is what we've seen time and again in Coeur d'Alene I've seen it ha- firsthand especially during COVID and mm-hmm. so when it comes to the individual and individual property rights is that really what it comes down to is is individual property rights here for you? A hundred percent. I mean, the way that they, um, you know, city has portrayed this to our city, you know, to our neighbors is that we're a danger to the neighborhood integrity, that it's going to be parties all the time, that it's going to, you know, that we're taking over neighborhoods. We are to, about 2% of the overall housing stock in Coeur d'Alene is short-term rentals. And even in the higher lit concentration area south of um, Harrison, it's only 5%. So we're not taking over neighborhoods. Um and um, the other, you know, real big piece of data that I, you know, shared early on, we pulled, um, we got data from the CDA PD that we asked for how, how many noise and disturbance complaints did you get in the previous two and a half year period? And then we did it again this year for the previous one year period. We cross referenced that with the um, short term rental permits, and it was less than 1% of complaints to the police department. And that's so, I mean, this problem, they make it out to, they, it's scare tactics. Um, and, you know, we wanted to really share the truth. And that's that's the truth is we benefit the, the town so much. We bring well-paying jobs to all kinds of people that work through, you know, that like house cleaners and, you know, furniture stores and, you know, and also just the businesses that our guests um, frequent downtown. I mean, our town thrives because we have options, because we can have families here um, and we don't want to be turning families away. Um, the, the more you, they artificially restrict how many short term rentals are available, the less the market can control pricing and volume and all those things. So, you know, when, when there's fewer than the market can bear, you're going to end up with way higher prices because there's less competition. And so then people, you know, on a budget won't be able to visit Coeur d'Alene. Um, we need to let the market control this, not the government, um, any, all the, all the, um, all the uh, things that they were considering as far as changing our bill were very arbitrary. Um, and, you know, things like lotteries and caps and distance, like, like you can't plan your future that way. Um, and we know that the market will naturally uh, keep us in a, yeah. a, a good role. But anyway, yeah, I mean, that's, that's, yeah, that's, that's the principle of, of a free market, yeah. you know, yeah. the demand, the supply, and, and then, mm-hmm. and then the, and then also the attractiveness of your business. So now tell me about this. Now, a lot of folks say, oh, you know, uh, uh, Airbnbs get trashed because of parties and there's mm-hmm. the, the, the garbage piles up and it's really messy and all that sort of thing. And, and I don't know, I've used Airbnbs before. Whenever I show up to a house, they're pretty clean. But what, what do you say to those detractors that say that Airbnbs just bring down the value of of the at least the aesthetic of the neighborhood that they're in well i'll tell you that how airbnbs are the prettiest houses on the block i can guarantee it because we are star based we want people coming to our house so we want five star reviews you're not going to get five star reviews if you have trash all over or if you have a house that's been destroyed by partying we we do not allow partying nobody allows partying in our town it's and uh, airbnb will kick you off the platform if you have um you know multiple parties like it is not tolerated it is also we are trying to protect our property we want them to be well taken care of and beautiful we don't want people in our properties that are that are doing that and also we adore our neighbors like we want our neighbors to be taken care of our house rules i mean it's like in bold at the top like we 
love our neighbors, take good care of them with us. Um, and so, you know, and that is what it is uh, across our city. Um, those kinds of, you know, things that you're saying, those are, again, those scare tactics that they put out. They say, if you have a short-term rental next to you, you're going to hate it. It's going to be horrible. And then people don't experience that, but they're worried that they might. I mean, and in some places, so in McCall, for example, part of their, and this is part of why our law is so important too, one of their, um, you know, the rules is you have to get a conditional use permit for larger houses. And a part of that permit process is you have to talk to all your neighbors. They have to agree to allow you to short term rent. So your neighbor gets to decide what you can do with your property. Totally arbitrary. They could may have they have likely never had any issues. They're just afraid that if there's a short term rental next to them, that's going to be a party house. And it's just it's not true. So we need you know, our constitutional rights to be protected so that the scare tactics don't win. And so we can just be yeah. part of our communities and benefiting them. And if there is a problem property, that's the other great thing about this bill. It still allows them to, to get permits. This isn't taking power away from them to, uh, you know, require permits or um, have safety, you know, rules and that kind of thing. It just creates that equality. It says that our guests and our and us are a uh, under all the same ordinances that everybody else is as far as parking and noise and all those things. So it, it's equality. It's not, we don't get anything special. We don't get more than other people. Um, it just protects our constitutional rights and creates equality um, for homeowners. And, and that's a hundred percent right. So we are fighting yeah. really hard for this because that's what we believe in. And we, we really talking to the legislators when they get down to understanding how these cities have overreached and that property rights are why this is so important. Um, so almost all of them are like, Oh, I get it now. So right, it's been right. awesome. Well, I'm sure I, I hope you've uh, been able to change some minds out there. Cause I know, I mean, there, you know, there is a lot of opinion on these short term rental things and what it, what the, the impact of it, that, that it has. And you shared mm -hmm. a lot of information with us about this and it's great to just know what the truth is and that you're fighting for, you know, for your individual rights and your property mm -hmm. rights. And those of, of seemingly hundreds of people who have emailed Lance cloud to get this hearing on Thursday. So I wish you good luck down there in Boise on Thursday. Uh, we, we will definitely be keeping tabs on it. We'll probably watch you uh, give testimony and, and okay. update everybody here. So good luck to you. Where can people find you if they want to get involved with your alliance? Uh, thank you. So we have a Facebook page, the CDA Vacation Rental Alliance, that you should be able to find. And also uh, for the statewide level, it's the Idaho Vacation Rental Association. So Fantastic. we do for, for, CD, for CDA, we do have a website. It's CDAV, as in vacation, R-A at, um, uh, oh, dot org. Sorry. Thank you. Yeah, you found it. That's it. <laughs> yeah. So, Great. Thank perfect. You. All right, Melissa. Well, thank you for joining us and uh, we'll check what well, we lost her. No, there she is. Okay. We'll check back <laughs> in with you, uh, with you again. Take care. Awesome. Thanks so much. Bye.